Inside Press Box is presented by Friedmont Mortgage. Don't make a 30-year mistake by choosing the wrong lender. Go to Friedmont.com now for all of your mortgage needs. And welcome to another edition of Inside Press Box. I'm your host, Stan the Fan Charles. This week on the show, we'll go inside one of the biggest challenges the Baltimore Blast have faced in many a moon as Dorian Kraft, our reporter, examines how the Blast have replaced their longtime mainstay at goalie Sagu, and they've actually thrived. We'll also discuss fantasy football with one of the leading experts in the country who just happens to live around the corner from you. Ken Zalis of FansFantasyFootball.com and PressBoxOnline.com joins us to get you ready for your playoff run. But first, we'll go inside one of the oddest 9-3 and three teams in recent memory in any sport as J. Michael, the Ravens beat reporter for CSNBaltimore.com, stops in for an introductory visit to the show. And Jay Michael, we welcome you to the show, and I appreciate you're navigating your way here to WMAR. <laughs> Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Now, first of all, J. Michael. Yes. But J. Michael, Michael is not your last name. J. Michael is your middle name. That is correct. How come you don't use your last name? It's Fal... Fal that's why. Falkost? See, that's why. Okay. <laughs> uh, end of topic. It's Falgust. Okay. Uh, the correct pronunciation would actually be Falgust. I'm from New Orleans. Okay. So most people either misspell it, mispronounce it, in, it usually causes a lot of fumbling, so it's this easier it's just to simpler go by. to go. And, and plus, you know, my father calls me by J. Michael. My sisters call me by that as well. So, well, that's what yeah. I'll call you. <laughs> now, people here in town call this nine and three Ravens team odd. They talk more about it almost like they're four and eight, five and seven. What's been your take? This is your first year covering the Ravens for CSN Baltimore. Tell us a little bit about what you think about this team. Well, I think the reason why there's so much controversy surrounding a team that's first in AFC North competing for a bye in a, the first week of the NFL playoffs is the fact that this team made it to the AFC title game last year. And so the expectations are naturally higher, and you're really judging how did – how does this team match up against the New England Patriots, Denver Broncos, Houston Texans, who are the elite teams in the AFC? And if you base it on that context, then 9-3 is good, but compared to those teams, it's not good enough. Not because of necessarily the record, but how they're winning. And you got to look into that crystal ball and you have to say, if the Ravens have to go on the road to play any of those teams, would you make them the favorite to win? No. And I think most right. people would say no. Yeah. And I think that's the reason for that. Tell me a little bit about the team. It's been almost a tale of two defenses, at least. Mm -hmm. The defense from start to the Houston game, and then after the Houston game, when they kind of regrouped, Dean Pease goes upstairs. They really rallied around their defensive coordinator, who's a veteran defensive coordinator. Yeah, I mean, there was a stretch between weeks five and seven that this defense allowed 207 rushing yards per game. It was astounding. So they had to make some changes. Obviously, he had injuries, so Dean Pease had to move some guys around. He took a guy, for instance, like Arthur Jones, who is used to being a defensive end, actually moved him to the inside, and Arthur Jones says, that's where I'm more comfortable playing anyway. He feels like that's a more natural position for him. He moved where he Suggs lines up, in the, uh, as well as Haloti Nada. And so he's done a lot of mixing and matching to try to plug some of these gaps gaps that this defense has they have been really maligned but you know they all say it's gap control it's discipline all of these moving pieces coming in and out we can't figure out we couldn't figure out how to get this thing done and I think they've kind of found a way to try to mitigate some of the injuries and circumstances they certainly have shored up that rush defense there's no question about it but now they face yet another obstacle in this torn bicep of Terrell Suggs and as we tape Midweek, he's saying he's a game time decision. Is this an injury he could play through without repercussions? There could be repercussions depending on how close. I the mean, tear repercussions is. of his of his health, you know. Oh yeah, right. Well, if if the tear, depending on how serious the tear is, close to his elbow, it could affect him long term. So it could be a situation where he misses the Redskins game and decides, okay, I'll get some sort of procedure done. I'll be back before the season is out. So he says this one thing, no matter what happens with Suggs, he'll be back in Ravens uniform before the season is over, whether he plays against the Redskins or not. So it still remains to be seen exactly what Rudy's going to take in order to address his biceps injury. All right. Now, we've talked about the defense a little bit. 
The, the offense has been a, a head scratcher, as it seems to be almost every year. This was the year that they were supposed to take the training wheels a little off mm -hmm. of Joe, and he was going to take control a little bit more. And I, I don't know, I wouldn't say he's fallen way backwards, but it certainly doesn't seem, if this is progress, I, I don't know how to spell progress. I, I couldn't agree with you more. That first game against Cincinnati, I think. I, I was so excited. It, after it, see, that. I think that gave a lot of people... They, their, their expectations kind of got a little bit out of control. Like, wow, 44 points that this team scored, 37 uh, by the offense. And next week you go into Philadelphia, start out well in the first half, and then from that point on, the offense has struggled, particularly on the road where they average less than 17 points a game. So it's, it's, it's confounding on why Joe, why Joe Flacco seems to take two steps back after he takes one step forward. Are, are pundits reading too much into it? It's really been odd the last few games. I'm all for playing young players, but you just paid Ray Rice the big money, and now all of a sudden Bernard Pierce is getting, you know, seven, eight, nine carries a game, which seems like a little bit of a load for him versus Ray Rice. I, I don't personally have a problem with Ray yeah. Rice getting, the, I mean, excuse me, Bernard Pierce getting the ball that many times. What I would say is give Pierce the ball seven or eight times, but instead of giving Ray Rice the ball 12 times, he should be getting it 20. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the answer. Have Joe Flacco throw less than 40 times a game. Usually when he's throwing a lot, Ray Rice isn't getting the ball a lot. They can't move the ball on third downs. They can't move it on third and short. They're often in third and long, and this, this offense becomes a complete mess. So I think some of that goes on offensive coordinator Cam Cameron to kind of figure out how to work this thing. All right, we got less than 30 seconds. They can beat the Redskins. Having said all that, they can beat them. They're 6-6. Six and six. Not a world beater by any means. There's no doubt about it, and the Redskins have had plenty of trouble with that defense. Even though Joe Flacco's on the road, relatively close to home, he should be able to put in a good game against the Redskins. If you can't have a good game on the road against a team like this, that doesn't bode well for the future. I thank you very much for coming in. It's been, getting, it's been good to get to know you this year. <laughs> Likewise, Dan. All right, Jay Michael from CSN. Up after the break, we talk with one of the leading fantasy football experts on this or any other planet. That's Ken Zalis. Keep your dial tuned right here. Friedmont Mortgage. Don't make a 30-year mistake by choosing the wrong lender. Go to Friedmont.com now for all of your mortgage needs.